January 31st, 1862, a year of conflict between the North and the South of the United States, a time where peace and diplomacy are no longer an option. But war is at hand, and President Lincoln of the North believes it is time to make it official. I believe it's time to take action against the South's racism. I concur their alleged rule over the blacks has to stop. Yes, yes, we have to take action. We have to act fast in starting this war. But it will take months to get our get armies trained and put on the front lines. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Railroads. They will transport troops to and from the front lines with incredibly fast speeds. But we can't be too harsh about this. We have to be subtle about this. Being too authoritative could about this could make us look too overpowerful, and we could lose the war before it even started. We would have to take railroads politically if it affects our warfare and security. So what first? Is the Army of Pontiac busy? No. And order them to commence on a seize and capture campaign. Tell them to capture on a Capture a point upon the railroad southwest ward of what is known of Mansas Junction. That should be a good first target. I want them to be there by the second, 22nd of February and not a day later. Right away, sir. February 20th, 1862. President Lincoln is struck with grief when his son, Willie, dies. Will this negatively affect the war plans of the president? How could this happen? He didn't even do anything wrong. How could this be? How could it happen? Typhoid! Why couldn't you do anything about it? It was too severe. By the time we arrived, it was already too late. It was never too late. The least you could have done was keep him alive just a little bit longer. You didn't have to give up. You could have worked with him longer and possibly saved him. Now look at him. This tragic event cannot or will not prevent me from continuing on with our war plans. We will continue to start the fight. May 31st, 1862, a few months into the war, General Joseph E. Johnston is trying to overwhelm the Union position near Richmond, Virginia, but he continuously runs into the same problem. This isn't working. Why aren't my men breaking through? Sir, the North Link has been defeated. What? Why? Our attacks are too uncoordinated. By the time they get through our west flank, there will be no retreating. The battle raged on for two days, leaving Johnson wounded and Brigadier Hatton dead. Due to Johnson's fatality, he was ordered to be replaced with General Robert E. Lee. The muddy, wet conditions on the battlefield further disrupted this attack. A few months deeper into the battle, another massacre is about to devastate the country. The Second Battle of Bull Run. General Pope is fired in the Union in the Union General's armies, General Stonewall Jackson and General James Longstreet, with seventy five thousand men, but both fight back with fifty five thousand soldiers. We outnumber them two to one. They don't stand a chance. Let me see the binoculars. Aha, it seems they have started to retreat. Victory. Should I give the order to pursue? See to it personally. But what General Pope didn't know is that the Union was just regrouping, and when Pope's men finally reached the Union soldiers... Run! Retreat as fast as you can. Don't get into groups. Split up. Don't let them lock you. The battle is lost. The Union lines welcomed the Confederate advance with a hail of red-hot cannonballs, lead, and fire, blowing down the Confederate lines. And then, the most deadliest battle in the Civil War, the Battle of Antietam. This massacre was started that when General Robert E. Lee invaded the North and advanced 50 miles north of Washington to Harper's Ferry, but was stopped by pursuing foe. March! Faster, faster! McClellan's men will be right on top of us soon. Move! Ambush! Get into your formations! Ambush! After a six-day conflict, the battle was over, with over 26,000 people dead, wounded, or missing. But the war doesn't stop there. Let's rewind a couple months into the middle of the year. The captain of 17 U.S. ships, David Fargus, sails up the Mississippi River to capture New Orleans. Full speed ahead! Ready right the cannons! New Orleans is as good as ours! Later into the war, Captain Fairwind strays into the minefield while capturing the last Confederate stronghold in the Gulf of Mexico. No, the last in the Gulf of Mexico. 
The next phrase you are about to hear was told when mines were widely known as Trotopes. It was a snowy December day in Fredericksburg, Virginia, when General Robert E. Lee and his army repelled enemy attacks and by General Ambrose and his army, who were ambushed by the Confederates by shooting at them into the valley. The Union lost many men the first few minutes in, of the battle. General, we have to stop. Call a truce to collect our dead and wounded. I see rain clouds in the distance. We can use them for cover when- Minefield, dead ahead. There's no short way around. What should we do, Captain? Damn the torpedoes. Full speed ahead. And make sure the rest of the fleet follows. Right away. This famous phrase is used in some of today's ships, used as a phrase of courage. And of the 17 ships in the fleet, only one was sunk. The rest made it through safely. Our story has not come to a conclusion yet. There is still one battle to win, one battle to finish them all. The battle at Friedrichsburg. One soldier of the Union Army remarks, we might as well have tried to take hell. It was one of the most decisive losses for the Union. It was a snowy December day in Fredericksburg, Virginia, when General Robert E. Lee and his army repelled enemy attacks and by General Ambrose and his army, who were ambushed by the Confederates by shooting at them into the valley. The Union lost many men the first few minutes in, of the battle. General, we have to stop. Call a truce to collect our dead and wounded. I see rain clouds in the distance. We can use them for cover when retreating down the hill. We would be better off taking hell. But the Civil War did not stop there. The war raged on with many more battles and many more deaths, and many more years. This was never the this was never close to the end. And what was the Civil War? Thank you for listening to 1862, the American Civil War.